and the bookies are already paying out for the Liberals, but the Labor leader is staying positive. Mr Barnett's plans for transport in Western Australia don't exist. It's as good as having a horse and cart. Bounce the ball on the left. The night was worse than even the party feared. A few moments ago, I rang uh, the Premier, uh, Colin Barnett, and uh, conceded defeat. Big issue. A seat-by-seat -seat poll uh, of Liberal-held seats shows that there will be a wipeout of the Liberal Party at this election. I came here 27 years ago in my Corolla across the Nullarbor and today, and today the people of Western Australia have made me Premier. The legislated GST fix will deliver WA nearly $5 billion extra over eight years. West Australia's Mark McGowan may be the most popular Premier in the country right now. Mortalised on a Scarborough man's leg. The Liberal Party will be reduced to as few as two seats. It gives Labor power in WA like it has never had before. Any small crack in fortress Western Australia is not good enough. Why did you lock down two million people over a very small number of cases? Are you afraid that the hospital system here won't be able to cope? Because I don't want to see what happened in America or Britain or India or Brazil happen here. Clive Palmer was trying to bring down WA's hard border. I'm happy to have a blue with Mr Palmer. He's the enemy of West Australia, he's the enemy of the state. I think he's the enemy of Australia. There's nothing wrong with going for a run. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with going for a run and having a kebab. We're not, we're not making it unlawful to go for a run and eat a kebab. Yeah, that's right. Fortress WA has reopened its border this morning. If we lose our trading relationship with China, that is, in effect, a mass reduction in national income. WA Premier Mark McGowan is en route to China. We'll discuss opportunities for investment and trade. Today I'm announcing that I'll be stepping down as Premier and as member for Rockingham. It's not a decision I've taken lightly. I've been considering it for quite a while. Laura Tingle is 7.30's chief political correspondent. Laura, McGowan leaves after six years in office. He's still very popular. What do we know about why he's stepping down? Well, he certainly looks like another victim of, of COVID, uh, Sarah, or another leadership victim of COVID. He says he's exhausted and there is no reason to believe anything other than that. Uh, he says, you know, it was just an exhausting process and he doesn't have the energy to fight another election, as, of course, Jacinda Ardern didn't. And, uh, and we've seen in, in other leaders, uh, in uh, uh, Peter Gotwan in Tasmania has also done the same thing. There's no suggestion that he was facing any sort of challenge. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the gloss always comes off leaders a bit, but he's still immensely popular and uh, subject to extraordinary levels of support within his own party. Now, you just talked about his, his, the very high levels of support that he had. What is it about his leadership, notwithstanding the hard rules he put in during COVID? What was it about him that resonated so much with voters? Well, I think it was because of the hard rules, actually, Sarah. The fact that uh, he closed the borders, you would think would be something that would go down terribly in Western mm. Australia, but in fact, it went down really well because COVID levels were very low in Western Australia. The economy was booming. Uh, people didn't have to close their businesses. Uh, he was enjoying 91% uh, approval ratings at times, which is extraordinary. Hang on, did you just uh, say? Did you just say ninety-one percent? Ninety-one percent. Nine one. Yeah. Nine one. Yes. And uh, and of course, in his uh, in the last election, which was the biggest election result in in uh, Australian history, uh, uh, his party ended up with 53 of 59 lower house seats and he had a primary vote in his own seat of above 80%. Now, I think you've got to look at both uh, mm. really standing out on COVID but also that deal that he managed to broker with Scott Morrison over uh, GST and um, West Australia getting a bigger carve out. It was because he took a different view to the rest of the country that uh, he was so popular. It does, it does rather beg the question, Laura, with, with those extraordinary numbers that he had, with that very high level of support, that he wouldn't want to stay to achieve even more. Well, he has been doing a lot uh, and, of course, they actually got uh, control of the upper house as well. Uh, but uh, as far as I can tell, you know, there wasn't a real view that the, uh, the government had misused or abused that power terribly. Um, but... Uh, in his press conference this afternoon, he went through the various things that he thought he had done for the state. He says that he has left the state better than he found it 
and that that's a satisfactory outcome for him and he just didn't have the energy but he wanted whoever replaces him to have a good you know, 20 months to, uh, to establish themselves before the next election. Now, let's move to the Prime Minister because he's in South Australia tonight delivering an oration. Um, he's using it as a moment to urge Australians to vote yes uh, for The Voice, but also calling for a moment of national unity. Can a speech like this, Laura, actually do something to shift the debate? I think it's become really hard for you know, anybody to deliver the speech that just completely changes the political landscape, Sarah. Uh, the, but the Prime Minister has to really try now. Without a doubt, there's the sense that uh, the voice uh, referendum is in trouble. His arguments are, look, uh, it does provide both practical and uh, sort of philosophical uh, uh, improvements for uh, our relationship with Indigenous people and for, shall we say, the soul of the nation. He's pointing out that nobody in 1967 thought that that referendum was magically going to change everything and he's not suggesting that that's going to happen now, but he's saying that it will be worse if we don't do this and, uh, and has pointed uh, in fairly pointedly to some of the comments by Peter Dutton last week about re-racialisation to suggest that, uh, that, you know, to suggest that race isn't an issue in our constitution at the moment is, is ludicrous uh, and that there is no reason to be frightened of this referendum in the same way there have been chicken little pr predictions that uh, weak... Uh, that the apology, all these things would lead to the sky falling in. That hasn't happened. And he's saying, similarly, there's no reason to be frightened of something that can actually bring the nation together. Laura Tingle, thank you very much indeed. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, Sarah.